How damaging is a strike for Air India and can it ride it out? Well, you know, funnily enough, in a way, it needs to be very damage, damaging and, and hopefully they won't be able to ride it out. Um, what, what's really happened over the last 10, 15 years is that the Indian aviation situation has been pretty much on hold while they waited for Air India to become a competitive operation. The two airlines, as you, as you mentioned, uh, Air India, the international operation, Indian Airlines, the domestic, were merged four years ago and they still aren't effectively merged and restructured and that's really what this strike's about because they still don't have uh, pay parity for the pilots, let alone restructuring the whole organisation. So, as I say, um, they can write it out. Uh, they're losing well over a billion dollars a year, which is coming straight out of taxpayers' funds. And in the process, they're actually hurting the aviation industry in India for the other carriers. Um, that's why I'm suggesting, in fact, we're probably better off if, if they don't ride this one out. Yeah, so it's also skewing the market here. I mean, we've got Kingfisher. We just look at those load factors, i.e. the proportion of seats being filled on these planes, and they're way, way ahead of Air India right now. Now, how does that uh, translate into, A, survivability for the airline? And um, also, you know, when you see that, you would also expect the share price of these other competitors to be on the way up. And we haven't noticed that. Is that just purely down to the f a function of higher fuel costs? Uh, fuel costs are a, are a real issue, certainly. The, the market is still very strong. It's growing. Um, but part of this whole process of, air, of, of India really not being part of the global aviation system has meant that their infrastructure is, is also very, very weak. So there's still um, very, very big congestion at Mumbai, for example, the, the main airport in the country, the, the commercial centre. Those sorts of things make it very difficult for the airlines to operate. But, yeah, I think there's probably still perhaps a little bit too much competition in the domestic market for the size that it is at the moment. It's, it's got lots and lots of upside growth. But right now that you've got a lot of carriers scrambling for a relatively small market. Yeah, one of the problems there has got to be, of course, and you alluded to it, with the Mumbai airport capacity constraints there. Very old infrastructure. They are addressing it, but it seems to be uh, at a glacial pace. Well, the, the large part of the problem is they're starting from such a handicap. They are so far behind in terms of the infrastructure they need. Uh, and in reality, over the last four or five years, they've actually done, done wonders, particularly with Delhi um, and some other new airports which, which have come through. The privatisation process has been reasonably effective. But, uh, yeah, infrastructure is still a, a very, very serious issue. And, of course, the airways as well, the air traffic control, is, a, is still relatively inefficient. Uh, Peter, in, in, in ten seconds, the odds of uh, Air India actually surviving? I, I think it will have at some time, whether it's now or in the relatively near future, to go into some form of receivership before the restructuring occurs. If the restructuring doesn't occur, it's got no hope whatever of surviving in the long run. Peter Harbison, thanks a lot for joining us. He's from CAPA there, just having a look at the prospects for, for the Indian aviation market, also particularly focusing on the impact of the, that nine-day strike now with, uh, with pilots at Air India.